Today on Gen Y, we're brushing up on our study skills. Join us at Sylvan Learning Center to transform you to be the best student you can be. On today's show, planting trees to save the fish. That's perfect. We find out more with the Watershed Stewardship Team. Also, a dance that combines artistic and athletic ability. That sounds like Highland Dance. And, Teen Powered. Find out what makes these teens at the Delta D's Rowing Club push for gold. See all this and more today on Gen Y. And welcome to Gen Y, a show for youth by youth. I'm Helen. And I'm Lindsay. And yes, we're all back to school. So we're at the Sylvan Learning Center in South Surrey. We'll be catching up with Kathleen later to get some tips on how to make this the best school year ever. But for now, we're riding the rails with reporter Miguel, who takes us to the 8th annual Tour de Surrey Skateboarding Championship. 5-0s, 50-50s, and ollies. That's what we saw on one of the stops of the 8th Annual Hippie Mike's Tour de Surrey. Well, Tour de Surrey is a skateboard competition. It's a series of contests that goes through Surrey. And I used to actually go to every park in Surrey, but this year I, I changed it to just go to each town center. So I'm only doing five competitions out of eight skate parks. Tour de Surrey was created because Hippie Mike saw a need to showcase the many talented Surrey skateboarders. Uh, originally, I was always a little bummed out. We didn't have very many competitions going on in Surrey. And we had a lot of good skateboarders out here, so I felt like we were being left out. So I decided, okay, well, why don't I organize something where we have more stuff for skateboarding than anywhere else? And uh, I brought that idea to the city of Surrey, and they were totally excited about it, and we just kind of partnered on the idea. And here we are eight years later. What I really enjoy about skateboarding is that just it really makes you just feel good like that feeling you get when you land a new trick or when you do something that you've never done before it just feels really really good. For some this is just fun but for others there are Andrew Reynolds and Tony Hawk dreams. Well I mean I hope one day I could go big and be one of the best in the world and compete with the other pros but right now I'm just enjoying it and having fun and just hanging out with my friends. Even though there's some heavy competition, the skateboarding world is one of community and support. I just love that the fact that it's just one big community and everybody's friends. There's not a ton of hate and like you can go out into like any skate park and it's almost every time you go you're gonna see somebody that you know and that you skate with and it just it's really cool. That was awesome. The thing I enjoy most about skateboarding is the whole culture and the community. If you fall down, any kid falls down, the whole park is right there ready to help. The concrete is hard. So yes, skateboarding can be dangerous. And safety is the number one priority for this skateboarding mom. I worry if he gets hurt. I mean, it's really important that he, he wears a helmet. If you want to skateboard, you need to wear your helmet. So there's sometimes a little bit of a worry of him getting hurt. Um, but, you know, there's risk to everything. So as long as he's having fun, that's all that matters. If you want to find out about the results of this year's Tour de Surrey or get involved with their competition next year, check out their website. Thanks, Miguel. Those skaters are sure tough, but still support each other, and that's pretty cool. It sure is. Right now, we are with Kathleen at the Sylvan Learning Center. Kathleen, can you tell us about the Sylvan Learning Center? Our goal at Sylvan is to help students do better in the classroom. So we can offer help for students who want to catch up, keep up, or get ahead. So we have programs in reading, writing, math, senior math, all of those subjects, right? Um, study skills, as well as SAT prep. So what we do is students come after school to our centers. We customize the program to the individual so we don't worry about the group. And uh, really, we have tremendous success. My centers have been going for over 25 years, and uh, Sylvan is the largest supplemental provider of education in North America. We'll be back with Kathleen later on some tips on how to make your school year great. But up next, we have a story that I did on some teens who spent their summer planting trees. 
But as we find out, there's a lot more going on than just your average landscaping. Friends on three. <laughs> Summer jobs for most teens are usually in a restaurant or clothing store. Today, we introduce you to youth who are earning money while making a difference in the environment. Planting native species is very important for fish bearing streams. Um, native species provide shade, um, keeping the water cool so fish can live properly, as well as their root system stabilize banks. And bank stabilization is very important because it prevents erosion. And erosion is sediment going into the streams and it will overcrowd the gravel where the fish lay their eggs. Not only were the crew planting, they were also removing invasive species. Invasive species pose a big problem because they overcrowd native species, and not allowing them to live and not allowing them to function and the ecosystem won't function properly as well and then it'll relay down to the fish. The youth involved not only earn money and make a difference in the environment, they also learn other valuable lessons such as the importance of teamwork. I think it's a really good experience for them. For a lot of them, it's um, their first paid position and they are able to work full time outside um, and with a group. So it's great team building as well as um, learning about the outdoors and the environment and also being able to educate the community in which they live in. I get to know more of the city and more of inside and the forests and like see what it is all about and the beautiful city. Tree planting is an important activity to protect the streams and I got to learn the steps firsthand. First of all, you want to find a good location. So uh, for trees, it should be about two meters apart from another tree. Just good shoveling tips is making sure you use your legs to lift it up uh, so you don't hurt your back. I'm getting a good workout. <laughs> And then we just want the hole as deep as the, the height of the pot. So this should be good. You can just press on the pot to get it out a bit easier. And what you want to do is just break up all the roots. All right, so we want to just put it in there. That's perfect. And there you have it, my first tree. And this is what the crew had to say about you getting involved. For all the teens sitting on their couch, get up, get out, do something. Help out the environment, because we can't do it all ourselves. I feel like nature is the most beautiful thing in the whole wide world, and sometimes you can't really make that. And nature is just what we're gifted with. Surrey has a huge network of streams that are vital for salmon reproduction, and that's why it's so important to protect our waters. This is Helen signing out for Gen Y. The Watershed Stewardship Team will be hiring again for next year. Find out from your career counselor at school how you can get involved. Okay, as I mentioned, we're with Kathleen with her first tips for students and reasons why using a planner is so important. All right, girls, I want you to think of your planner in a completely different way. Just like you have all your friends with their email addresses, you have an email address book. And the reason you have that is because you can't remember all of your email addresses. Well, that's exactly what a planner is for. You can't remember all your homework. You can't remember all your assignments, all your deadlines. You need to write it down. It really helps you allocate time to task. A lot of students, they have an assignment, and they don't allocate enough time and then bingo, they're late, right? So, and they, or they have a poor result. The other thing is it helps you set priorities. What do I need to do first? Uh oh, I got a big test tomorrow, I better work on that versus something else. And finally, the one I like the most about a planner is when you finish a task, you get to cross it off and you really have a good feeling of accomplishment. Okay, after listening to that, I'm going to make sure I use my planner for the whole term and not just the first couple days. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we'll find out some more ideas for staying on top of your studies and these stories. Dancing up a storm. We catch up with the South Surrey Highland dancers. And... Feel that top through your shoulders. Hitting the water hard.
Gen Y will be right back. such a loser. Come on, Four Eyes, give me your lunch money now. Give it to me before I smack you. You know what? You're the dumbest kid in the whole school. No wonder nobody likes you. I'm gonna beat the snot out of you. Yeah, come on, bring it. Come on, let's go. Are oh, you afraid of me, eh? I'll take all you guys on, let's go. Bullies just want to show off. But if everyone just walked away, imagine how silly bullies would look. Walk away, tell someone. Because bullies aren't bigger than all of us. Get up and move your body at least 30 extra minutes each day. Welcome back to Gen Y. Today at Sylvan, we're here to pick up tips and we have Kathleen here to help us. Okay, one of the things that I struggle with is taking notes. Sometimes I'll go home and I can't even figure out what I'm supposed to know. Well, Lindsay, here's a couple things that happen with students in the classroom. Um, first off, often students either take too many notes, they write everything down, or they write nothing down. So what we want to do is find a nice compromise in between. What you're looking for and what you should be writing down are the main ideas that the teacher's talking about. And then you write down your subheadings and supporting details underneath that. Because that will trigger, you know, all the smaller details that you need to remember for an exam. And another key thing you can do is write down the questions the teacher asks in the classroom because those are the kinds of questions that will often be on the exam. Well, what about taking notes from a textbook? That's a great question and the best way I can explain it is by showing it to you. So let me see your textbook. When you're taking notes from a textbook, what I recommend you do is look at the headings and subheadings and turn them into questions. So for example, a barter economy is our heading. Well, you would ask, well, what is a barter economy? And then when you're reading, you're looking for the answers for that, and those, is, those are the things you should write down. Same with this one here, the importance of social class. Well, what is the importance of social class? Or what is the family compact? So if you do that, your notes will be concise. And quite frankly, those are the kinds of things that will be on the test. Now that makes sense, but what about tips for those who put off doing their homework? Oh, you're talking about the procrastinators. All right. You know, there's really only one tip I can give, you know, to kids who don't really do their homework on time. You have to stop doing that. You should do your homework right away. I think students really need to understand the causes of why they procrastinate. That's really the key to changing behavior. Why do I do what I do? So number one, I think kids put off doing homework because they don't have any priorities, right? And if you have goals, goals will help set your priorities. They'll say, I need to do my homework over doing something else. And then I think the other reason students procrastinate is often a lack of skill. If you don't know your math and you don't know how to do it, you sort of put off doing it. So I think in those cases, students really need to learn to ask for help. Asking for help. Let's come back to that later. But first, here's some teens with talent as we catch up with our local Highland dancers. Dance is often a reflection of a culture. Today we bring you Scotland's energetic Highland dancing. Highland dancing is uh, traditional Scottish dancing that was originated obviously in Scotland. Uh, started probably in the 1700s. Uh, today kids compete and dance throughout Canada and the world. The significance of the sword dance is what was traditionally danced by soldiers on the eve of a battle and if one of the soldiers should displace or touch the sword, it was said to be ominous towards the battle the next day. The dancers make it look so easy, but Highland Dance requires a lot of stamina, leg strength and skill. Highland Dancing is very strenuous. Uh, the people need to have a lot of endurance, a lot of stamina, a lot of strength, as well as making it still look balletic and graceful. Competitions are a huge part of the Highland dance world. I enjoy the feeling that you get being on stage and knowing that all the effort and all the hard work you put into it is going to be worth it in the end. 
and if you do well, then it's just that much better. Some competitions can be really fun and you just have a good time. And other competitions, there can be a lot of pressure. When I first started, it was very nerve wracking, but after a couple of years, it gets better and you like, you build confidence and it gets easier. <laughs> we learned that the only way to train for Highland Dance is to just do it. To be a Highland Dance, you have to be determined and want to work hard towards it because it's not easy. But once you do well and you learn everything, then it's, um, it's a good time. Obviously, your outfit is a big part of Highland Dancing. Tell me more about it. Okay, so all together, this is called a kit traditionally. And these are soft leather kind of shoes, and they're normally called ghillies. Um, these socks are made of wool. Um, they're very, very thick and hot. And then this is a kilt. Normally, there's about six meters in a kilt um, of material. It's also made of wool. And then this is just a velvet jacket. And these little buttons were traditionally made out of silver. Highland dance isn't only fun to watch, but it's also fun to be a part of. If you'd like more information, go to the BC Highland Dance website. I'm Abby, signing up for Gen Y. See you next time. Wow, they were amazing. I bet they must have asked for a lot of help from others. Now Kathleen, I understand in school it's also important to ask for help. Absolutely. You know, teachers aren't mind readers. They don't know that you know or don't know what they've just taught. So it's important to put up your hand. Ask that weird question, because you'll get some fun information back. So I think that's the key. And you know what? If you need extra help, teachers will go the extra mile for those students who are keen on doing better in school. You know, the kids that are kind of lazy or lackadaisical or don't care, well then the teachers aren't going to care. So I think it's important that you understand that you are in charge of what you learn. School is a responsible environment and it really is up to the student to be responsible for their education. Thanks Kathleen, I have learned that lesson and sometimes the hard way. Now another lesson teens are learning is the negative impact of social media on their lives. So did you update your status today? Have you liked anyone's post lately? Yes, we're talking about Facebook, but do you really know what you are sharing with the world? Well, I make sure that uh, only pictures that I would want other people to see are on my account, and I make sure that my privacy settings are pretty tight. My privacy settings aren't very good, but um, I find that I don't really, I don't really think people will go on my Facebook, so I don't really try, to, try not to worry about it. I think if you're unaware of how to keep your profile private, it could be somewhat dangerous. When people learn that a lot of their content is already on Google, my question for them is, where did it, how did it end up there? Where did it go? Where is it being held today? How many Facebook friends do you have? As Jesse points out, are they really your friends? Why would you tell all your friends you're going on vacation? Why would you take photos of your kids and tape them to the outside of your home? We just add people sometimes because it seems easy to add those relationships and I think that um, even though social media has given us an ability to communicate with friends and family that we haven't seen or can't talk to because we live in different places, we dilute the word friend a little bit by adding people just to update and share things. How many friends do you have on Facebook? Um, 1,307. And how many of those would you say that you would actually invite to your wedding? I'd say 1,307. <laughs> I am a very open person. <laughs> um, no, um, not that many. Facebook has both negative and positive aspects. It's pretty sweet. I can talk to my friends and plan special events. I think it's good because people can communicate with each other in a very easy and quick way. I think it has become a really important with regards to extracurricular activities and groups outside of school as a means of communication um, and getting everyone kind of on the same page. Um, it's helped me communicate with my friends and uh, it's fun to share pictures and stuff. And I think it can be a bit invasive sometimes with people who you aren't really friends with looking at it. 
I think social media can be used in education. I think kids who are learning about programs around the world and languages and events, they can see them happening in real time watching YouTube or through Facebook friends. But I think a lot of kids are using Facebook as a tool to waste some time, to focus on some of the negatives in life, and to use it as a tool where they can hide behind a veil, where they communicate some of the things that they would never say in person. We asked Jesse for some tips on how to be safe in cyberspace. If you wouldn't do it in person, why would you do it online? If a, bus, a person at a bus stop came up to you and started asking you questions like, what's your phone number? How many friends do you have? Where do you live? Where do you go to school? You would never answer the questions and you'd be looking for someone to help you. But why type it out into black and white where anyone can read it at any point from anywhere in the world where they can learn about you years and years later? If you have a cell phone and you need numbers, well, talk to your friends. Make it private. Don't put a page up where everyone can just add their numbers. Now it can be found by Google. Wow, I don't know about you, but this has really made me think about my Facebook profile. I agree. I'm now more cautious about what I put on my page. Do I really have 500 friends? I hear ya. I definitely learned a lot from that story. Lindsay, have you changed your Facebook habit since then? Yeah, I definitely did. Well, there's a lot more Gen Y coming up after the break. Gliding through the water with ease. We catch up with the disciplined teens at the Delta D's Rowing Club. Gen Y will be right back. Oh, there she is. She is such a loser. I know. <laughs> What a geek. <laughs> Get lost. Words hurt. Don't be a part of it. You. You can choose. You can choose to be alone. You can alone. choose to be a choose friend. Choose to be a friend. You can choose. You can choose. choose. You can choose. You can choose from seventy shades of blue. From seventy shades. You can choose blue. to ignore. You. You. Choose. You can choose to run wild. <laughs> wild. wild. You can choose. choose not to watch. I. I. You can choose. You can choose. Cause you can. Welcome back to Gen Y. Nothing beats the feeling of gliding through the water in a boat on a beautiful day. But in Delta, this next group doesn't just glide, they power through the water using nothing but their own strength. Okay, paddle! These junior rowers may seem experienced, but they haven't been at it for very long. I chose rowing because I wanted to try something new that I'd never done before and I was looking for a sport that was committed and determined and kind of demanding. So I tried rowing and I really liked it. They come here very focused, they are ready for practice, they are going out on the water, they're pushing each other and helping each other in reaching their goals and supporting each other. And as a result, each one of them are actually reaching those goals and, and getting what they want out of the rowing. One of the rowers, Jake Elward, is well on his way to achieving success. I was just at the Royal Canadian Henley over in St. Catharines, Ontario, and uh, I got 10th overall out of 45 people, and it's like, it's an international event, so there's, there was like a team from Argentina there and from Europe, and it was pretty cool. There are many challenges while rowing, but one in particular seems to be shared by most rowers. It's that mental game that you have to play with yourself, when you start to get tired, you start to lose your focus. And especially this happens in a race because during practice, we have really supportive coaches, we have a really supportive team, and they're always there to sort of cheer you on and support you during practices. But if you're in a singles race, it's you against the other boats. It's you, you have to encourage yourself. And learning how to do that is quite a challenge. These rowers have sage advice for experienced rowers and newcomers alike. Don't get too frustrated with yourself because I'm still pretty new and I remember my first time rowing and I got so frustrated and you just got to stick with it and then you'll pick it up right away. It can sometimes be hard to stay with at first but if you stay with it and you get committed and you work it into your schedule, it, it, there's, there's tons of opportunities and there's so many different levels of competitive that you can go to. It's difficult at first. You're in this boat, it's tippy, it's hard to stay upright, you probably will flip. but 
after you get comfortable in the boat, it's just so much fun. So stick with it and you'll have a great time. Feel that tug through your shoulders. Crucial timing, communication and teamwork ensure success right here on the water. And the members here at the Delta Rowing Club certainly have mastered those skills. In Delta, I'm Miguel signing out for Gen Y. Good luck, rowers. We're here at the Sylvan Learning Center with Kathleen. Do you have any final words of advice? I do. I want students to think of school as their job. And if you have a job, you want to do it really well. It's important to understand that in order to be successful in life, you've got to work hard. Success doesn't come easy. You've got to burn the midnight oil. You know, we see these A students and it looks easy to them, but I think it comes after lots of long hours of doing their homework and spending that extra time. That's really what will make kids successful. And you know what the other nice thing is? When you work really hard, success tastes that much sweeter. So put in the extra effort and you'll really be successful at school. Well, that's a wrap here for us today at the South Surrey Sylvan Learning Centre. Thanks to Kathleen for her awesome words of wisdom for being successful in school. Now we welcome your feedback. If there's a story that you want to see, you can leave us a message on our email or check out our YouTube site for past shows. For Gen Y, this is Helen. And this is Lindsay. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Gen Y is brought to you by Options Community Services.